the Nazi regime in Germany was a dark chapter in world history, marked by acts of genocide, war, and oppression. The architecture of the Nazi regime played a significant role in the way the party communicated its ideologies and values to the German public. The buildings and structures constructed during this time were designed to impress and intimidate, showcasing the power and grandeur of the Nazi party. What role did architecture play in the Nazi regime? And who was Albert Speer, the man often referred to as Hitler's architect? In this episode, we will delve into the world of Nazi architecture, examining how these tools were used to manipulate the German people and further the Nazi cause. We will also explore the life of Albert Speer, who despite his close association with Hitler and his role in the Nazi regime, remains a controversial and complex figure. The content of this video is presented solely for historical and educational purposes. We do not endorse or hold any opinion on the matters presented in the video. Albert Speer, born into a wealthy family in Mannheim in 1905, followed in the footsteps of his father and grandfather by pursuing a career in architecture. After completing his studies, he chose to stay on at the university as a lecturer. Despite his privileged upbringing, Speer was initially uninterested in politics. However, by 1930, he found himself captivated by the Nazi party and its leader, Adolf Hitler. Speer joined the Nazi party in March 1935 becoming member 474,481. He left his position as an assistant to Tessenau due to the economic hardships caused by the depression and moved from Mannheim in hopes of establishing himself as an architect. However, after failing to do so, he was given a part-time job by his father as a manager of his properties. In July 1932, Spears visited Berlin to assist the party ahead of the Reichstag elections. It was during this visit that his friend, Karl Hanke, recommended him to Joseph Goebbels to renovate the party's headquarters in Berlin. After completing the commission, Speer returned to Mannheim, where he remained until Hitler took office in January 1933. The 1933 Nuremberg rally was a pivotal moment in Albert Speer's life bringing him into the spotlight as a sought-after architect. The party approached him to design the rally, putting him in a position to meet Hitler for the first time. Speer was sent to seek Hitler's approval of the designs and construction matters, which would ultimately lead to him being appointed as the Nazi party's commissioner for the artistic and technical representation of party rallies and demonstrations. Speer's political allegiance has been a subject of much debate. In his memoirs, he claimed to have been a passive member of the Nazi party, only paying his monthly dues. However, in an interview with William Hampshire, he admitted to joining the party to save Germany from communism. After the war, he claimed to have had little interest in politics and to have joined the party by chance. As a nine ideologue, he was not a passionate anti-Semite, but his actions spoke louder than words. For Speer, gaining power, ruling, and acquiring wealth were his primary motivations throughout his life. When Paul Troost, a favorite master builder of Adolf Hitler, died in January 1934, Speer seamlessly stepped into his role as the chief architect for the Nazi party. He was appointed head of the chief office for construction by Hitler and placed on Hess's staff. Speer's first big project after Troost's death was the Zeppelinfeld Stadium in Nuremberg a massive structure that could hold 340,000 people and was used for Nazi propaganda rallies. The stadium is famously depicted in Leni Riefenstahl's propaganda film, Triumph of the Will. Speer was determined to showcase his lighting effects, and he made sure that as many events as possible were held at night, which also had the added bonus of hiding the overweight appearance of the Nazis. Nuremberg was a hub of official Nazi buildings, with many more planned, including the German stadium, which was intended to seat 400,000 spectators. For the 1936 Summer Olympics, Speer took Werner March's design for the Olympic stadium and added a stone exterior that caught Hitler's eye. He also designed the German pavilion for the 1937 International Exposition in Paris. In late January 1938, Adolf Hitler officially commissioned his preferred architect, 
Albert Speer to build the new Reich Chancellery around the corner on Volstrasse, a western branch of Wilhelmstrasse, with a one-year deadline. Hitler marked that Bismarck's old chancellery was fit for a soap company and not fit for a greater German Reich's headquarters. It remained, however, Hitler's official residence, where he lived in the so-called Führerwohnung, or the Leader Apartments. Hitler assigned Speer the task of designing grand halls and salons that will make an impression on people on the entire northern side of the Volstrasse. Speer was given a blank check. Hitler stated that the cost of the project was unimportant and instructed that the building be of solid construction and completed by January of the following year in time for the next New Year's diplomatic reception to be held in the new building. Speer claimed in his autobiography that he had cleared the site, designed, built, and furnished the building in less than a year. In fact, preliminary planning and design versions were being worked on as early as 1935. More than 4,000 people worked in shifts to make progress around the clock. The massive construction was completed 48 hours ahead of schedule, earning Speer a reputation as a good organizer, which helped him become armaments minister and a director of forced labor later in the war. Speer utilized forced to dramatically increase armaments production while dispersing factories to reduce damage from Allied bombing. During the construction of the Mittelwerk factory, where Speer used prisoners from the nearby Buchenwald concentration camp to produce V-2 rockets. The conditions in the factory were terrible, with prisoners forced to work long hours in dangerous and unsanitary conditions. Many died from exhaustion, starvation, and disease, and those who could no longer work were sent to the gas chambers. Speer was aware of the inhumane treatment of prisoners, but chose to turn a blind eye to their suffering. He believed that the success of the Nazi war effort was more important than the lives of those forced to work in his factories. In the war's final stages, Hitler ordered the destruction of factories, utilities, and transportation. But Speer recognized their importance for post-war Germany and disobeyed orders. Speer began to countermand Hitler's orders by delaying their implementation and arguing for the preservation of critical infrastructure. He persuaded field commanders to spare historical and strategic sites, arguing that they would be recaptured in the counterattack to avoid accusations of defeatism, which carried a death penalty. The propaganda was not limited to Germany. The Nazis used their methods of control and manipulation in the countries they occupied during World War II. Albert Speer was a key figure in the Nazi regime, and he was involved in several war crimes and crimes against humanity including the use of forced labor in the armaments industry and the implementation of the Final Solution. He was arrested by the Allies in 1945 and was tried at the Nuremberg Trials where he was found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison and served a sentence at Spandau Prison in Berlin where he died in 1981. Despite his close association with Hitler and his role in the Nazi regime, Speer has been the subject of much debate and speculation. Some see him as a talented architect who was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time, while others view him as a complicit accomplice in the atrocities committed by the Nazi regime. The legacy of Nazi architecture and propaganda, as well as the role of Albert Speer, remains an important reminder of the dangers of using architecture and design as a means of political control and manipulation and the consequences of unchecked political power. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe.